The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our uh, gospel lesson today is the, from the 21st chapter of John. It is the epilogue to the Gospel of John where we see some unfinished business being taken care of. In particular, what are we going to do about Peter the failure? So we'll see what that means for us today. I think everything is in the bulletin as it should be. So we'll begin with the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. God's peace.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. be with you. And also with you. Eternal and all merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, we laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Acts. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found anyone who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So, he led them by the, so they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now, there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus called Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man from Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer at the sake, for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house, and he laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days, he was with the disciples in Damascus. And immediately, he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God, the Word of the Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
A reading from Revelation. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of his disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to look at 
this gospel text today. And we're going to look at failure, purpose, and cause. Failure, purpose, and cause. Over the years, I have encountered a number of people that have failed and have come to me about it. Sometimes it's a moral failure. Sometimes it's a business failure. Uh, and people who have put their life and soul into a business worked hard. And everything they did just led to failure. Failure at school, failure with family, failure with children, failure with marriage. And if you can't add your own failure to that, then you haven't lived long enough, I guess. We all have failed. Well, we look at Peter today. He was a bit of a failure. By the way, uh, as was the Apostle Paul. Purpose. We're going to look at those three terms, purpose. Uh, Matthew Barnett wrote an entire book about um, purpose and cause. Everything has a purpose. Not all things have a cause. Let's talk about that for a second. For instance, board games. The purpose is to follow the rules, get the most points, win the game. That's what happens when I play. My family says, no, there's a greater cause to spend some time talking and sharing, some good quality family time, right? Dad, it's not about winning, right? Coffee. We serve coffee here at church. What's its purpose? To enjoy a nice warm beverage, a pick-me-up. But there's a cause behind serving coffee because we can all go someplace else and have better coffee. But the cause is to give people, to give us a reason to linger, linger longer, to talk, to share, have something called fellowship, in particular Christian fellowship, share our lives and our faith. Church dinners, very similar. Nourish the body. Everyone needs to eat. Cause to give people more time to talk and to share and to have Christian fellowship. Peter was a, a failure. I think we've um, talked about this in the past. John really is harder on Peter than uh, it seems the other gospel writers uh, he makes sure, uh, make sure everybody knows that Peter never gets it. Whatever Jesus is talking about, Peter never seems to get it. When Peter makes that bold proclamation, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, he never gets what it means to be uh, the Christ, for Jesus to be the Christ, that he must suffer and die. He never gets what it means to be a disciple, that a disciple is one who gives his life. Peter uh, also confronts Jesus at the um, Last Supper, doesn't want Jesus to wash his feet. Peter denies Jesus three times. Peter has a, a race to the tomb, loses the race to get to the empty tomb, walks into the empty tomb, sees Jesus not there in his burial clause there, and does not believe. So Peter is a bit of a failure. And you'd think, so his purpose seems to have lost sense. Let's go fishing. It almost seems as if fishing has lost sense. His cause to be a disciple ended in failure. So what are we going to do with this failure, Peter? Well, that's why we have the epilogue to the Gospel of John, chapter 21. 
Let's do it, deal with Peter. Goes out fishing. Now he doesn't even seem to be able to do fishing right. He fails at fishing. His main problem is he wasn't fishing with Jesus. Because now along comes Jesus on the beach, yells out to the disciples who have been fishing all night long and caught nothing, and Jesus says, Children, you haven't caught anything, have you? No. Well, throw the net on the right side of the boat. They do it, and they get a tremendous catch. So, you go fishing with Jesus, and you catch something. Peter was at one of those difficult times in life called the dark night of the soul. That, that, that's what po poets call it, don't they? The dark night of the soul. And surely, you've all been there. Well, the beauty of the dark night of the soul is that very often it is there that we open ourselves up. We open ourselves up to God and God can reach us. God can touch us. God can change our situation. It's only in that disappointment, in that frustration, that God can really come to us. We seem to be closing God off until that dark night of the soul. Peter is having that dark night. Jesus is even going to make it darker. The place where God works best in the disappointment and frustration. And now, Peter could open his heart to hear God's call. Gets darker. Oh, by the way, uh, Henry David Thoreau wrote, Many people go fishing all of their lives without knowing that it is not fish they're after. I find that a curious statement. He could have been writing about this text. And is he writing about purpose and cause? The promise of God for us is not that we will get what we want in life, but God will meet us where we are at. God will meet us in what we get. God won't give us everything we want, but God will meet us with what we get. Jesus takes Peter off to the side. Of course, Peter, uh, his clothing, I, I know the text says he's naked, but with uh, those that study Greek all of their lives suggest that, no, what he did was the gown that he was wearing on, he tied up around himself so he could swim better. And he dives in the water and swims ashore. Gets there and talks with Jesus. First has breakfast, and, and the disciples now are gathered around. So this is not a private meeting. And Jesus has his meeting with Peter. And he asks Peter, do you love me? And Peter emphatically says, Yes, Lord, I love you. Peter, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Tend my sheep. Peter, do you love me? And now Peter, his heart is broken that Jesus asked him the third time. And most scholars suggest that that is because it reflects his three words of denial. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know I love you. Feed my sheep. Well, Peter has his meeting with Jesus. And his life 
markets change. He still is a fisherman, but his purpose is different. Peter, just as Jesus promised when he called him, Peter, you are going to fish for people. His cause, his cause was now to tend, care for, feed people. Quite a change. So his failure is transformed into a learning situation. Again, what this is about is the fact that God won't give you. Seldom gives us what we want. But he wants to meet us in the life we have. Or as a more popular way of putting it, love the life you have, not, that you th- not the life that you thought you would have. Let me give you an example of how this works. I don't know if, if, if you thought about cause and purpose. And we try to do it. We, we, we call it mission when we say cause. But we try to do everything with a cause. Matthew Barnett He, um, he thought he was quite a hotshot preacher. And he is. But he had this opportunity to go to Los Angeles in the Echo Park neighborhood. And there it had been once a thriving community and now was dilapidated and a, a poor area. And he goes and he's in a, um, the organization he was a pastor of buys a big old hospital. And the church he was ser- serving, on a good Sunday, they'd have 18 people. He started preaching and he said they averaged about 12 people at worship. And then it was down to 10 people And then it was down to eight until the Sunday that no one showed up. No one. Matthew Barnett then had a dark night of the soul. He's laying in bed, listening to his wife breathe, and struggling with God over this. He goes, God, I thought you called me to come to Los Angeles to build a great church. Nobody showed up. Nobody. And he's struggling with this. And he's just hung up on what he thought God was going to do with his life. Have him build a great church. And he felt God said to him, go for a walk. So he gets up, gets dressed, can't sleep anyway. It's midnight. Goes for a walk, gets to the park in Echo Park. And there, he, the whole time he's confused and struggling with God. And he sits down at a bench and he's struggling with God. And he goes, God, I just don't understand. I thought you called me to go to Los Angeles and build a great church. And after he prayed that, all of a sudden he started hearing all the noise around him. One o'clock in the morning, and the place was bustling with people. All illegal activity. There were drug addicts and drug pushers and the dickering back and forth on the price of drugs. There were prostitutes and pimps and I guess we could say customers all dickering about price. Homeless people shuffling around. All this 
noise. All these people, the place was crawling with people. And then he says to God, one more time, I don't understand it. I thought you called me to go to Los Angeles to build a great church. And he felt that God said to him, I did not call you to Los Angeles to build a great church. I called you to Los Angeles to care for people. To care for people. We could say, feed my sheep, tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. It changed his purpose. Oh, by the way, God said to him, let me build the church. Let me build the church. You just work on the people. After 15 years, he had quite a successful church. You know, one of those mega churches filled with A lot of people who nobody else in Los Angeles cared about. Drug addicts, prostitutes, homeless, as well as a lot of others. After 15 years of doing that, he decided he would go and spend a night on the street. Pitched a little tent, walked around, and he said this, He was first frightened, hadn't been on the street at night, in the middle of the night, for a long time. And so he's a little frightened by the noise and the illegal activities. And then he said, I stood trying to get a firm fix on my emotions, and my confidence returned. I wasn't here to perform a circus trick or get the public's attention. I was on the streets because I have truly come to love the unlovable. I have discovered that God can love those that no one else wants. And frankly, I was afraid after 15 years, I had lost my edge. He marveled at the great love of God who asked him to love people who are, by all other standards, unlovable. He found a cause. Well, God wants us, each of us, to have a cause in life. God wants us to realize as a community of faith, we all have a cause. We started Child care center. It's not to take care of children while their parents are at work. That might be its purpose. But its cause is to mentor children and families to make a difference in the world. Robert Putnam this week said that's crucial to helping people come out of poverty is mentoring helping them understand what it takes to love, raise children, understand what it takes to live. I would like us to expand into other areas and do that. But personally, a teacher who goes to class every day goes early so she can pray. Pray for every student in her class. Pray for their parents when she knows There's a struggle going on. And then she's free the rest of the day to watch her cause, God working in the lives of her students. A businessman, every single day. Every time he makes a business decision, he doesn't just make a decision. He goes to his office to pray about it. And he prays that this be a decision that's guided with wisdom that it be done so carefully, it 
not only helps him in his business, but it helps the people he's doing business with, that it helps his employees. He has a cause. Even something so simple as a children's sermon. Someone came to me and said, Pastor Dan, my kids don't remember the children's sermon. <laughs> and I said, well, that's what they have parents for. <laughs> but what's the, what's the purpose of a children's sermon? Well, the purpose is to say, church is for them. But the cause is that they would learn that God loves them, that their church loves them that this is their place to be. Well, if you're in the dark night of the soul, God will come. He wants to heal, give strength. And He wants us to be energized by His cause. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified by the Holy Spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. Amen. 
Rooted in the abundant life and love of Christ Jesus, we pray for the life of the church, the lives of people in need, and the life of all creation. Holy God, you supply everything we need and more. Equip us to do the work you intend with the confidence that you will multiply the outcome. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open our eyes to the promise of new life all around us. Make sprouting plants, awakening animals, and swimming fish all bear witness to your glorious abundance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Preserve the lives of those who are persecuted for their devotion to you. Use the faithfulness and insight you have given them to transform their persecutors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore the well-being of people who cry out to you in suffering and in want. We pray for healing, especially for Darlene Aaron, Joe Boyce, Dan Carlson, Terry Carlson, Pam Cole, Lucy and Lyle Dolly, Vivian Donnell, Sandy Drake, Ron Fells, Mary Lou Fisher, Christy Harrison, Jeff Hempel, Ralph Hurley, Tina Law, Paula Merkley, Chris Marquardt, Willis Melgren, Liam Miller, Eddie Miner, Norma Mueller, Stan Nelson, Denise Newbold, Irma Owens, Bennett Shanks, John Stamper, and Harvey Welch. Are there any others? We remember the saints who praised you in life and in death. Bless those who grieve and turn their wailing into dancing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We deliver all this into your care, O oh God, trusting in the work of your Holy Spirit to bring all things into the risen life of Christ our Lord. Amen.
us pray. Blessed are you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and the witnesses to the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Today we commune via intinction, so you will receive the bread or a wafer in your hand. Hold on to it so you can dip or entinct it into the wine. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Give you thanks, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven to earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears, tend to those in mourning and pain, seek the healing of the nations, and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Right uh, after this, of course, uh, new member class, uh, Lutheran Inquiry class in the library area. There's another adult class down in the daycare area. Go ahead, Linda. Our purpose next week is to have a Palooza here. I'm here for the cause, the parish life. a sign-up sheet out at the Welcome Center, and if you can help us out, Pastor says we will not have hundreds of people. So I just need a few cookies, some fruit, and some cheese and crackers. So if you will um, be willing to serve, help serve our, or furnish it. Yes, if you'd like to bring something, sir, sign up. And if you would like to attend, it's from 2 to, or 3 to 5 on next Sunday. No, thank you. I have one. Oh, that is true. <laughs> By the way, I wanted to thank you. We had a very successful garage sale yesterday. I had very little to do with it, actually. My purpose was to clean out that Dollison house. And it's clean. Okay? There's a lot of stuff over there, so if there's something that you might need or want or whatever, let me know. We'll go over and we'll take a look. We'll dispose of or dispense to or do something with. But anyway, looks nice over there. Thanks. Uh, David, did you solve the mystery? Do what? Did you solve the mystery? Oh, absolutely not, Dan. What mystery is that? <laughs> the mystery of the um, playground figure that's supposed to be attached to the spring out in that yard. No, it's, okay. it's gone. Maybe you absconded with it, took it home and put it in your shed. Hardly, hardly. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care for the need. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks. Thanks.